inspired by um, a conversation with an Uber driver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's amazing. No, it was literally, we, I, I, I left my mate's house and then I was on my way home. I, he, he, I was telling him about Chocolate Poetry Club. He was asking what I did. I said, I'm a poet. He was like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, cause he, I think he was generally surprised because you don't hear many people nowadays saying they're poets. So he was like, let me read some of your stuff. And I was like, no, 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 I'll do one better. I'll just tell you a poem, carry on driving. Yeah. So I told him the poem and it was just, I don't know, like, do you know, like, sometimes when you tell someone a poem, you feel like the atmosphere, and he said he felt goosebumps. I yeah, felt yeah, goosebumps yeah. when I was saying the whole poem, and when I finished, he loved it, and then it just led on to this whole deeper conversation on life and con- current affairs That's and stuff beautiful. like that. And it's literally, when, he, when I left the taxi, he said, Do you, would you mind, like, writing me a poem or something? That's like, wicked. just so I can remember this journey and the conversation. Oh, I was like, man. yeah, sure. Oh, man, I love that. I love that. That's beautiful. That's what that's what art does. Yeah, it's, and I literally does. when he asked me, I was like, "Oh my gosh, write a poem!" Yeah. <laughs> and, then, so now. and then I literally got inside, had some dinner. I was like, "Oh my gosh, this go, is it?" Go. <laughs> yeah, that's wicked. Like that. Yeah. Um, uh, what is my? Ah, if you could visit any scene, past, present, or future, where would you go and why? All right. They're not fun places. I would love to have um, uh, just been like in terms of just to see what see what the emotion they're facing, what they're going through, and you know, a fly on the wall uh, in World War Two. During you know with Anne Frank and her family, yeah, and, uh, and that would have been cool. The idea of having to be dead silent when they walk past, you know what I mean? Yeah. And what that would have been like up until their final day, because whenever I read that story, I get chills. Like that's crazy to think. All of you lot, I don't know how exactly how many was in that one room, but like or that one little attic. Yeah. And you've got to be complete. Like don't make a single sound when they come through. And another thing is, being from Tottenham, we had the 2011 riots for too long ago, and I yeah. remember. I was there, um, so I was like in Tottenham when it happened and I went off to university that same year. And I remember I was on the street when it happened, I was walking home from work. And as soon as I got home, less than half an hour it all kicked off. And I was like, what? So I'm watching it on my TV while it's happening on my home studio <laughs> from where, where I live. And uh, that was quite, but you know, the history behind the riots to an extent is connected to during the 1980s um, when a lady was I, I want to say she was killed but it resulted in a policeman's head getting chopped off oh. um, in Broadwell Farm in, our, okay. in our, one of our local, one of our local estates and I've watched documentaries on that and seen how that played out and I would have it would have been interested to see how like the emotion on the people's face because they just really felt I'm done with the police like, you yeah. don't do nothing for us you don't hear from us and this is where time where I think it would have been just before maybe yeah, it would have been before um, the Martin Lawrence situation I believe to the but, it, but it would have been there's a lot of tension with people yeah. with the police right? yeah. I think it would have yeah. I can't remember what year Martin Lawrence was actually I can't remember Off what top year of my head. It is. but it would have been just before that where there was tension with the yeah. police and this idea of of you know the, the police not treating black people right, especially in their states in the yeah. council estate areas, so to see what, to be a fly on the wall in that situation, and also to an extent, right? And I don't condone it at all, but you could see just how angry they were to chop up man's head off. Disgusting. Yeah. That's disgusting. You know what I mean, that's horrible. Yeah, no. But it also tells a story of what type of emotion would it was around at that time, and just because I like history in that sense of like. I wonder what it would have been like just to see it physically, yeah. like, do you know what I mean? Same. Like to be it. Not necessarily just always like black and white, but just to see, like, what was he thinking through? Yeah. And I think that's why, you know, when, when, as we're poets, we like to create stories, like to create emotions, like to create, take you, almost take you back and picture, picture yourself there. Yeah. And those are a couple of images I'm like, yeah, man, I wonder what it would have been like. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And my final question will be. You've answered most of my questions. Yeah. <laughs> what you said. <laughs> so I guess 
It's not more I'll change this question Because I was going to ask you What What made you Take poetry serious Because you know, I know that already So I guess My final question will be How far do you want to Take your writing I think um, So I love performing I'll say that I love performing um, Quite often, whether it be down these sides or wherever, yeah. Um, and now I love that just because, as a performance poet, that side of it, I love showcasing it in a grand way or yeah. a public speaking way. However, I want, I guess, the brand Aaron James, the author, to be. Um, where the heart of my legacy lies to an extent yeah. not because I don't love performing I love that but I think my my aim is to get more kids involved in creative writing right? yeah. but that's that's the purpose it's not, it doesn't stray away from that too far at all right um, and I want that name to be recognised as some of the greatest children authors in the world do you know what I mean yeah. um, and you know, I'm committed to the vision of putting out good content. I'm committed to my craft. I'm always working on it. I'm always, whether it be, you know, the public speaking, whether it be the performance-based ones, whether it be creating like children's stories. I'm committed to my craft and my art. I don't, this is what I, I care about. You know, I, um, I, I love it. Uh, I, you know, from a hobby, from a passion point of view, it's all I think about. Yeah. Um, so, how far I can take it well you know if, as, as far as I can take it I can't, I can't put a limit on it whether it be, whether it be finishing my career 10-15 books whether it be creating a TV show from it whether it be creating a cartoon creating a play whatever yeah. just pushing it that's good man so yeah thanks man thank you very much for having me yeah you're welcome yeah. um as we're at the end of the show, do you have anything you want to plug? Yeah, so I'm on Instagram and Twitter at Aaron James Poet. Cool, cool, cool. Um, and the, uh, my current debut children's poetry book called The Dog at My Homework is out. It's available online at most places, such as like Waterstones, Foils, Amazon, or you could kind of um, get in touch with me directly and I could send out a personalised cool. signed copy as well. So we'll have yeah. all your information on the website and it will be on the information on this podcast Fantastic. as well. Fantastic, so. great. Thank you very yeah, much. Man. Wicked. Thanks, Very man. Thanks for having me. Wicked. Nice. And, uh, yeah, guys, it's the end of the show. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stop that one.